Chapter 21, Untitled. I wrote quickly. From time to time, Anton, Artem, or Leosha, the student programmers, would drop by and bring me a bite to eat. I still had not told them about Anastasia, but I explained to them that the organization of the fellowship could be facilitated with the help of the book I was to write and so they set about keyboarding the text of the book into the computers. It was mainly Leosha who worked on this. He showed up every three days, bringing a printout of his latest keyboarding and taking home a new chapter of the manuscript. And this went on for about two months. One day, Leosha showed up with the last printed chapter of book one, a diskette with the full text, two bottles of beer, frankfurters and some other kind of food along with a little money and set it all down on the kitchen table quote where did you get all this bounty leosha i asked to amazement he lived alone with his mother on very limited means he didn't always have enough money to buy metro tokens or even sandwiches quote it's exam time uh, vladimir he responded, I do drafts for some of the students. I make up computer programs for them, for students who can't do them themselves or are too lazy, and they pay me for them. Quote, and will you make it through the exams yourself all right? Quote, I'll do. I've just got one exam left, and in a couple of days I'll have to go off for a month on military training to Kineshma. It's good you managed to get Anastasia finished. If there are any corrections to be made now, Artem will take care of them. Anton's already off on his training. Quote, Tell me, Leosha, how did you possibly manage to sit exams, do drafts, and make up computer programs for others and still keyboard and print out Anastasia every day? Leosha didn't respond. I turned to the kitchen table to serve up the steamed frankfurters. Leosha's head and arms were resting on the table on top of the printed pages containing the Anastasia text. He was fast asleep. Chapter 22, Unraveling the Mystery. Standing in the kitchen of my small Moscow apartment, Standing next to the table with the frankfurters getting cold and Leosha's head resting on the pages containing the text, I made a promise to myself to find a way of regaining my capital and getting back my ship with a view to taking it on the same journey as last year when I first met Anastasia. But not on a trade mission as before. I wanted to go there during the white nights of summer so that Leosha, Anton, and Artem as well as those who had worked like dogs in spite of all the setbacks and often to the neglect of their own well-being, to organize a fellowship of pure-minded entrepreneurs so that they could enjoy a decent holiday aboard my ship in the most luxurious quarters. And what was this grand idea all about in any case? What kind of hold did it have on people? Why was I, too, drawn into it so closely? What kind of mystery did it conceal? I just had to figure this out in concrete detail and unravel its mystery and purpose. And why are people so turned on by this dream of a taiga recluse? What lies hidden there? How can I unravel the mystery? A journalist named Katya Golvina tried unraveling it by asking the students to explain what motivated them, what their personal stake was in all this. But they couldn't give a definitive answer, saying only that it was something worth noting. I'm sorry, something worth doing. In other words, they were working on intuition. But what was behind this intuition? Chapter 23. At Moscow print shop number 11, 2,000 copies of this first slim volume about Anastasia were printed at the shop's own expense. Why did the manager decide to print a book by an unknown author? Why would he do this and, in spite of the print shop's current financial difficulties, use offset paper instead of the usual newsprint? 
The first books I sold myself near the entrance to the uh, Taganskaya metro station. Then I got some help from some of the book's first readers. An elderly woman would stand, would daily stand and sell copies outside another metro station. She would take great pains to explain in detail to anyone interested what a wonderful book it was. Why? Then readers began selling it as well in vacation centers on the outskirts of Moscow. They would print out announcements and organize readers' gatherings for, people's hol for people holidaying there. Then the business manager of Moscow's publisher's clearance house suddenly decided to offer the print shop an advance on an additional 2,000 copies. His actions were strange and unexpected. He drove over to see me in his car and told me, quote, my son and I are leaving the country today to go to a tennis tournament. Our plane goes tonight. I need to hurry to get my payment in. He paid for the second print run in full. When the time came for him to pick up the books, he told me, you know, during the summer, we don't do a lot of book selling. I'll take several packages. The rest, you take care yourself. When the money starts coming your way, you can reimburse me. Right from the moment I started working on the manuscript, there had been many whys associated with the book, even to this day. It's almost as though the book were alive, drawing people unto itself and using their help to break through into life. I used to think that the events connected with it were pure coincidence. Only those coincidences started tying themselves together into a pattern. Now I have no idea in all that has happened just what is coincidence and what is conformity to law. The two have become exceedingly difficult to tell apart.